Hi, I'm Dr. James Laporta. I'd like to talk to you today about different treatment options out there for cancer, and more so how do you navigate your way through them and, and decide on the best roadmap and, and package for you. With the diagnosis of cancer comes a lot of fear, grips you. Am I taking the right medicines? Do I listen to oncologists? Do I go to conventional treatments and ignore the natural alternative sides? Do I really not want to go that route and live as purely as I can and do only natural treatments and herbs? What about diet? There's so many diets out there. Am I on the right kind of diet? Which camp do you choose to be on? It should never be a choice like that. Maybe you're in the right camp. You're in your camp. It's about taking the power back, being captain of the ship. And suddenly you look around and you have so many tools available to you, so many different types of treatments. With modern medicine and ages of tradition and Eastern philosophies and herbal medicines, and we have a lot of information. And the worlds are merging. We're bringing science into both sides. And we can see how they interact, which ones may be exactly appropriate to your type of tumor, and also what feels right for you. So it's a journey, a journey by gathering information, and as I said, being captain of the ship. Just to pause on that point, when you take the power back, as it were, and you engage with treatment, you see it very differently. You're not submitting to a pull that you're taking, closing your eyes, waiting for life to start when you get better or for some remission to happen. You start living right now, today. This is when it happens. You take that medicine, you're engaging with it, it's working with your tumor, it's shrinking it. You, you are alive right now, living passionately. You know what that does to your immune system? That activates every single immune cell, it puts it on red alert, it goes looking for these tumor cells, it makes your body handle the side effects much, much better. It reminds me of one of Viktor Frankl's quotes. He says, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Choose your tools, engage with it, be passionate and take this head on. And that's what you have, an attitude to work with these medicines in power or submit and hold your breath and just hope that something happens. It's scary, it's a big thing, but you've got the power to do it. What doctors are there to do to help you understand different options and to help guide you as a, as a roadmap almost. At Malachite, that's what we like to do. We like to make sure that you're integrating the very best, that you're not conflicting with any medicines from either side, and that we can do what feels right for you. What feels right from an evidence-based approach, what you're comfortable with in your belief system, and doing away with all of these unnecessary dogmas and, and stigmas and you know things around chemotherapy for example. Chemotherapy has come such a long way. It's not like it was in the uh, in the dark ages as it were, where there's a blanket approach with all the chemotherapy you can think of that causes a lot of side effects and few outcome. It's much more pre um, precise at the moment. You have chemotherapy where it's targeted at very select cellular pathways and specific to types of cancers. You get 80%, 90% success rates with some of the lymphomas. I mean, that's unheard of. There's treatment for cancers. Some cancers are more difficult to treat. Some are stubborn and we don't know. Each has their own personality. But we can use chemotherapy in so many different ways. That's an unfortunate stigma around chemotherapy. Chemotherapy by itself, without the right kind of nutrition, without the right kind of support, or maybe some integrative therapies, sometimes doesn't work as well. Sometimes it works perfectly, but ultimately you really want to do it responsibly. Look at what your body needs, how to work with that chemo. Um, chemotherapy can be natural medicines, chemotherapy can be conventional pharmaceuticals. Chemotherapy means cancer killing drugs. So I use the term perhaps too lightly, but it's a, for me it's anything. It ranges from immunotherapy by activating different cellular pathways where the cell sticks up its flag and says, immune system catch me, I need to auto-regulate myself, I'm cancerous, I'm not functioning properly, um, but something's been broken. And those medicines literally put a flag on the molecule or stimulate pathways where the cell says, I'm here, and exposes itself to the immune system. We can stimulate immune systems or some types of chemotherapies, and other ones we can just use in certain combinations been fascinated by the progress that's been made in terms of genetic testing and in terms of what sounds so logical, testing 
which chemotherapy drugs your tumor cells will respond to and which won't. So yes, we can rely on studies, but just as every person's different, every tumor's different. We're working at the moment with two companies, one company um, based in the UK and in India, and we, if we can get fresh tumor sample, we take that, we send it across very quickly, and they culture it in different petri dishes, and they test about 30 different types of chemotherapy drugs on each of your cancer cells that are now rapidly dividing in different media. And we uh, then take some of the botanical isolates like curcumin, artisanate, EGCG, various other natural medicines and throw that in the mix too and see which dosage of which drugs works. And if the dosage is too high, side effects are too high, we're not going to use that chemo. And suddenly we can see which ones work real time. That's logical, right? The same happens with uh, another type of test we do is about over 150 um, next generation sequencing genes that allow you to map out what pathway in the cell is aberrant. Is it the point that checks itself and stops the mutations growing? Is it the part that it's called apoptosis, that the tumor says, right, I need to kill myself because something's wrong? Is it a growth um, stimulating pathway within the cell that is just amplified and, and, and progressing too far? When we know where the mutations are, we can understand A, which drugs are going to work best, B, which drugs the tumor might be resistant to, and C, perhaps there's drugs that are used for different types of tumors that are perfectly suited for your tumor. So we certainly do that with any uh, cancers that come in, and we have the fortune of getting fresh tissue samples. If not, and you've already had your tumor biopsied, uh, they normally keep it for about two years, and we can send that away for just the genetic testing, which is brilliant as well. What also becomes quite exciting is the way that we deliver the chemotherapy. Uh, in certain tumors, we may be able to map a blood vessel that supplies the tumor directly and you can use lower doses of chemotherapy directly through that blood vessel in beads that then causes local release of the chemotherapy agent into that solid tumor as well as some ischemia and things like that and it's uh, fascinating not all tumors but some tumors we may want to do that we look at how far radiotherapy is advanced at the moment and how you can use gamma knife surgery and various other things to pinpoint with precision where your tumor is and and use the right kind of radiation beams to shrink that tumor to disrupt its cellular processes that are now mutated or aberrant. Suddenly you use this with things like berberine that can make the cells radiosensitive and natural plant extract or you can use a specific type of chemotherapy like gemcitabine with curcumin or you can use um, what they call vascular endothelial growth factor that stimulates tumor cells to grow and produce new blood vessels. Uh, things like Avastin are used for colorectal cancers and brain tumors. So suddenly you have the option to take the right kind of chemotherapy to select for your tumor. You can take the adjunctive surgery or radiotherapy or novel way of delivering whatever treatment from the conventional side. You can support it with the right synergistic actions from certain plant extracts pertaining to your tumor makeup and pertaining to your overall state. You can support pain control and appetite and immune stimulation with acupuncture and various other herbs. Suddenly you've got the right kind of diet that's been customized just for you, whether you need nourishing or whether you need more kind of an anti-inflammatory cooling system, antioxidants, uh, depending on where you are on the cancer spectrum and what treatment you're getting. And then you've got a few novel approaches and different treatments you can bring in that are more experimental but with an evidence-based approach. And by evidence-based approach I mean the benefits must always outweigh the risks. First do no harm. With chemotherapy we know that there are good benefits and Truth is, there are very few medicines that are as good as some chemotherapies. And in that case, the risks are less than the benefits. In other cases, like natural medicines, we know that intravenous curcumin or intravenous uh, EGCG or the artisanates, we understand how they work in the body. We understand the pharmacodynamics, the pharmacokinetics. We, we can get to use these treatments very responsibly, and the risks are very low. So the benefits outweigh the risks. I want to talk about a few uh, interesting treatments. I'm going to bear with me, I'm going to go quite quickly through them just as a taste to see what options are out there. Many of you know about cannabis. We've spoken about cannabis in some other videos. Um, cannabis is a brilliant treatment for appetite, for helping you sleep, for uh, relaxing some patients. Uh, certainly good for calming uh, the system. Uh, some people say it even helps with seizures. Sure. Uh, to have a medicine that can help with pain and increase appetite and relax you and help you sleep is brilliant. There is no drug on the market like it. For some patients though, it may cause a little more anxiety and it may not be appropriate. We know anxiety causes a stress response. That stress response may stimulate certain growth pathways in tumors. We don't want that. Let's have a look at something a bit more controversial like uh, ozone therapy. So ozone therapy, absolutely. Um, 
in certain cases it can help stimulate wound regeneration, wound healing, uh, oxygenation of tissues, which sometimes uh, tumors growing very hypoxic tissues. And metabolic syndrome, it can help a lot with the very cellular processes, but as soon as you change the interface between the tissue oxygenation or the tumor oxygenation and what is exists on the outside in the blood vessels and, and in the surrounding tissue, you have a mismatch. The minute you have a mismatch, you stimulate vascular endothelial growth factor. Just like we mentioned before, that's one of the strong targets to, to, to stop tumor growth. So now you're giving ozone therapy and you may actually stimulate tumor growth. There's not enough research at this stage to say whether it's good or not. I know a lot of natural people use it and some people say they feel much better. Fine, I don't, don't doubt that. Uh, from my side, I think it's a potentially dangerous treatment. If we look at things like apricot kernels, everyone's heard of apricot kernels. Um, you know, it's got a bit of cyanide in it. You eat a few, there's been some miraculous cases. A lot of people are using it. A lot of people feel quite sick on it. You have to eat so much apricot kernels. You can barely take any other tablets or take any other food. Uh, sometimes we've used intravenous amygdalin, which is the apricot kernel. Um, uh, it can work. It's quite cytotoxic. It works similar to chemotherapy. Again, the research benefit risks, I haven't seen enough research out there. We've got to look at all the treatments from some strange product found in the Amazon to a herb found somewhere in the east they've been using to a new plant extract chemical they've isolated from somewhere else to what they've generated in the lab as, as a chemotherapy agent. They're all the same. They're all medicines. They're all tools. And we have to look at it scientifically and with an evidence-based approach and make sure that it fits your body type completely. Okay, let's look at a few things. GCMAF very controversial and um, immune stimulating, uh, same as things like Escador, um, same as various other mushroom extracts, all very good. Again, when it comes to these things, you need to decide what is the most important treatment. Are we working synergistically with chemo and using a pro-oxidant effect? Are we looking at boosting the immune system as, as a primary point? Are we looking at doing very antioxidant therapy and helping the body regulate itself in a more natural way, which can be good for very early tumors? Not necessarily for late stage tumors. Uh, very good for preventing tumors and very good for remission and, and staying in remission. But they're very different types of treatment. And now you've got all of these tools, you can't choose the whole lot. Your workshop's going to be filled and you're not going to be able to move. You won't be able to eat, you'll be depressed from so many medicines. So you've got to choose the top five or six and, and go with that. So yeah, there's lots of immune stimulating agents. Um, we can have a look at things like um, vitamin C. So low dose vitamin C is an antioxidant. Very high dose vitamin C can work as a pro-oxidant. It creates some hydrogen peroxide production and free radical formation. Now there's a few other drugs that do this too. Uh, artisanate can do that and vitamin K3 can do that. Um, I said amygdalin can too and there's one or two other drugs or drugs, natural medicines if you want. Um, chemotherapy drugs do that a lot too. So now you can suddenly start looking at the synergy by using something like a very high dose of vitamin C with vitamin K3 mixed with artisanate. We find that to be very effective. Uh, side effects are extremely low, although you can suppress your bone marrow and we just watch out and make sure that you, uh, you, you recover quite quickly, normally in about 3-4 days after that. Uh, something just very quickly in artisanate that's, that's so fascinating. So you get various ways of cells dying, you can get apoptosis, necroptosis, oncosis, or ferroptosis. Anyway, so artisanate works with iron inside the cells. The tumor cells have a lot of iron and I'll talk in the next video about how exactly it works, but we're very passionate about using artisanate in very high doses with things like high dose vitamin C, K3. We combine things like sound wave therapy to help activate certain mycelial formation within the cells and anyway, that's, that's for another time. I'm not going to get into too much detail. Um, a few other things, uh, we know the benefits of curcumin, absolutely. Oral absorption is limited, so we use intravenous curcumin quite a lot. We use things like EGCG intravenously, we use resveratrol intravenously. Um, obviously a lot of vitamin support and mineral replacement intravenously. Uh, give the body a bridge to really get up to that standard before moving on to the more orals. If we look at uh, a few of the other botanical isolates, uh, there's a huge range that we can then choose to work with a specific chemotherapy to work with the type of intravenous therapy we're using. But we can also choose to use something like photodynamic therapy. So photodynamic therapy uh, works very, very well in conventional medicine when you've got superficial lesions and you rub a type of uh, cream or some type of agent that gets highly activated by a certain frequency of light or laser. And when that happens, it shoots a free radical and damages the tissue. So you can imagine that certain tumors absorb these ingredients or chemicals a lot higher than other cells. And now you shine the laser and it selects which cells to kill and other ones aren't as affected. So an excellent form of treatment. 
things have progressed since then and we've got certain agents we use here at Malachite where you can actually go a lot deeper into the body. We can use needles to stick through the tissues closer to the tumor and we can also use it intravenously with fiber optic cables to try to pick up circulating tumor cells. Now the one that we use uh, specifically is, is an agent that is very innocuous to the body. It's, uh, there's no side effects, it's minimally invasive and you inject this or you inject it directly into the tumor and you suddenly have a situation where the cells look at it, absorb it, secrete it very, very quickly. And the tumor cells quite like it, they hang on to it. They've got certain processes, certain receptors that just cause that ingredient to sit in there. And you'd be none the wiser, the tumor cells not affected by it at all. It's almost like a Trojan horse, it's just sitting there. The minute you bring in a laser that goes right next to it at the right frequency and the right strength, you stimulate those cells. You have oxygens whizzing around inside the cell, breaking up cellular processes, cellular structures, and you can cause death in those specific cells. So if you've got an area of tissue and some of the cells are affected, shining a laser light through there is going to do nothing to the other cells, but target the tumor cells directly. We find a significant results quite quickly with tumor shrinking. But the clinical effect of how long it lasts afterwards is, is still debatable. Some tumors respond quite rapidly and we see a great result and we don't have to treat again. Others seem to respond and then move forward. The best result we found with most tumors is when we combine it with chemotherapy. And of course many tumors it's just not the right kind of cancer to use it. Or it's in a situation close to blood vessels or inside the, the head where we don't want to cause too much swelling or close to the spine etc. There's a lot of ways we use it. I think if anyone offers you a one-size-fits-all cure for cancer or a silver bullet. It's when you have to turn around and run the other way. There's no simple answers that, that affect cancer. And you need to explore the different options, your different tools, and choose which ones work together synergistically and which ones are right for you. In one of the next videos, we'll talk a little bit more around uh, the approach of how the immune system can be stimulated with certain mindsets and certain emotions. And we'll also look a bit more closely at how to navigate through these different treatment options and try and integrate them at different areas of your health. Look forward to seeing you soon.